while we learn about the opposition on the pitch, Wiser learns how to heat my home. Well, Rob, but uh, at half time you had your noses in front, but you obviously had the elements against you in the second half, and, and just a shame you didn't get something out of that game in the end. Yeah, I think, you know, I just said to the lads, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a funny game in a lot of ways because we've probably never caused Saracens that many issues attacking wise as we had before. You know, anyone who's watched the game, I know if you're an extra supporter, you're going to be frustrated with us not converting opportunities that we, we created, but we haven't created opportunities like that against Saracens probably ever. And I, and I probably wouldn't think there's another team in the Premiership have created that many opportunities even this season against them because they, they were there, they were in much, multiple areas. I thought we did that really well. So you, you've got to congratulate the guys for being able to create that. Yes, then you've got to say, come on, we, we've got to convert a few more. We know that's just a bit of a situation for us. But then the thing that we got, the tack, it's, I'm not going to say it's as simple as say it's taxi wrong because it's obviously a bit more than that because obviously Saracens were a good side. But we dropped him way too easily into that soft kind of non-competitive penalty scenario very quickly um, you know I think after our time we, we seem to get a little dented by the the first hole on penalty when we, we've already made some ground and made a break again it's it's a slightly weird one it looks to me it looks like side entry and, and we kind of get a we get a bad call there really and that looked like it dented us and then we kind of went soft penalty soft penalty as I as always Johnny Johnny gets done for offside Try, trying to charge a kick down, he just doesn't need to do it. That gives him a chunk. Uh, and another time, I think I think John might play play someone half in the air at a line out. We turn them over during the set deep. We go go back to another pen that gives him territory. And if you actually looked at it, then I think we give up a couple then for not rolling away at, at, in the tackle of the floor. And you just start going, oh, here we go. Because every time we built a little bit of pressure, you know, there's nothing wrong with us not scoring every time we have the ball. But it can't end up in a penalty and then a big chunk, and that's what was happening. And in the end, I was just, just sitting there watching it go penalty, penalty, penalty. And and the penalty count was a bit was a bit extreme, you know. I don't mind saying it, and certainly flipped after half time, which, which is interesting. Um, but um, I think also we allowed that to happen a little bit, and we weren't. Like I said we didn't just hang in there tough enough to just go right. We've lost the ball, or we're but we're in we're in charge here. We've put points in the lead. Even when they kick their first penalty, we're still in the lead. Even when they score their first try. It's a one-score game, and yet it felt like at that stage we are scrambling just to try and get scraps of the ball back. If you scramble and try to try and get scraps of the ball in Saracens, you get killed because it just becomes penalties. Lance Delalio came up after and said he felt you had some really tough calls in that game. Was it? Did you feel that? Right? Oh, without doubt. I mean, I've even had a message from another director of rugby going, couldn't, couldn't, well, all was saying to me, couldn't believe the conversations going on uh, on the pitch at times. And so it, it kind of shows you, and I obviously need to, to sit and watch the TV commentary myself to see exactly what was going on. Because, because, but there's obviously something quite significant seems to have happened during the game. So it'll be interesting to see what it is. Just a shame you couldn't get that last try. You were trying your hardest to get it, which would have got you at least something from the day. That's right. And I think, uh, it's like I said, when you, when you, I mean, we, you know, you can't plot and plan your way through the season too much, but you should never really have an expectation that you're going to come and get bonus point wins against the best teams away from home. You have to try and fight for them and work for them, of course you do. But actually, your expectation should be a good performance, maybe picks up a bonus point or a couple of bonus points, or however you look at it. And then that, you build your season around where you play your points. Our biggest issue hasn't really been today's result, it's been our, our performances that have led to the results we've had at other stages this season. One huge positive, Stu Townsend came off the bench and looked so sharp, didn't they? Yeah, Stu did really well, uh, which is obviously very pleasing. That kind of just adds another string to our bow for these last couple of fixtures. And I, you know, I just said to the lads, I, I don't believe the season's dead by any means. You know, I think there's a lot left in this season. You know, we'll, we'll know exactly where we stand after next week. It's obviously like a stagger of wines, really, with our, it being our bye week. And you know, the, the way every weekend is panning out, you know, I could quite easily see us where we've got a really significant opportunity to stay in the top four with two wins. Um, and that's what we've got to keep fighting for. Yeah, I think everyone's still got to play Harlequins. Gloucester and Northampton are still got to play Saracens, haven't they? And listen, I mean, whatever happens, we're going to have to play well because whatever happens, we'll have to win the, both games. But I think if we do, I think it could be still an interesting end of the season for us. How do you cope with this three week break, though? That's really unusual at this time of year. It is, but then, you know, because of the way you know, the bye weeks have worked for us, you know, we, we, you know, it's come late. The lads haven't had much of a much of a break. This will give them a nice block off. We'll give them nine or ten days now. They'll get back in. That still gives us two and a half weeks training and running into the Bristol game, and, and we'll, we'll enjoy that and we'll get on with it. And we'll we, we can actually start a little bit of the process of 
just resetting ourselves. You know, we've got we've got a bigger group back now. You know, they they kind of the group is together really for the first time. You know, this group hasn't really been together like this for any block of time this season. And we're just going to make the most of it. We're going to get on with things, and we're going to just just keep resetting ourselves to the things that are important. And, and the first one is to work hard, and we'll get some good hard work done, and we'll be ready for Bristol. Well, thanks, Rob. Hard lines on today. Thanks very much.